So um, this ad is sponsored by Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Uh, good morning, this is Robin Norgren, and I am uh, doing a podcast called Creativity Montessori and the Meaning of Life. Thank you for stopping by. I wanted to begin with a poem that I came across this morning, and this happens to be Christmas Day, but man, this could be the start of any uh, day when you decide I just want to choose myself and stop running around trying to form myself into some image that someone else has given me. Maybe you haven't even realized that that's what's happened. Take a moment now to listen to this. The name of the poem is called Love After Love. The time will come when, with elation, you will greet yourself arriving at your own door, in your own mirror, and each will smile at the other's welcome and say, sit here, eat. You will love again the stranger who was yourself. Give wine, give bread, give back your heart to itself, to the stranger who has loved you. All your life, whom you ignored for another, who knows you by heart. Take down the love letters from the bookshelf, the photographs, the desperate notes. Peel your own image from the mirror sit, feast on your life. This poem is by Derek Walcott. I can honestly say when I think about uh, over the years now, now that I'm halfway through 51, so many ways I've gone through life, I'm trying to prove myself. I'm just a girl with curly hair who has lots of big ideas creatively that's just trying to fit into um, spaces that I have too much mouth for (laughs) as far as having opinions and while wanting to change the world I find in many ways that changing the world within a structure is a very difficult thing to do it's very hard to find that balance of changing the world while at the same time conforming to Um, the culture in which you find yourself. And the older you get, the more you realize if you haven't found that structure yet, you need to make the choice to build your own structure or just to quiet down. And I can honestly say over the last few months, I've been trying to just quiet down. But there's something about meeting certain people at a certain time in your life people who are outside the structure who remind you that something specifically in the way you say things can be life changing and once you see that response in the eyes of another you have to decide what you're going to do with that power Maybe you're not meant to impact millions. Maybe you're not meant to impact thousands. How about you just impact a few? Is that worth it? And I think each one of us has to decide that for themselves. And I invite you to really think about that because... The fact of the matter is, we don't know how long we have together. We don't know how much time we have with our families. 
we can only be so intimate with our spouse or with our children. And at the end of the day, we always have to come back to ourselves. You look at the youth and you think, wow, they have it all together. But you realize that they'll have their own battles, that that energy is important for the battles they'll have to face. And as you're getting older, you realize that those battles take a lot of energy. And so the older you get, you realize you have to conserve your energy. Especially as women, the energy that we put out for everyone else, and I do believe there's some women who can be that selfless and, and never feel that need for any sort of thank you. I am not one of them. I can give and give and give. But there, there, there needs to be a, a world where reciprocity is a thing. Otherwise, we are going to raise a generation of people who demand and never give back. So here I am doing this podcast, and part of the reason why I'm doing it is because there are many things about the journey that I've been on that I've tried to put in traditional settings. Um, I, I was trained to be a chaplain, and basically what that means is if you think about a church and a minister, that's what I've been trained to do. And many people come across me, and they, they don't really know um, that I've had that kind of extensive training. So it either goes one of two ways. They either think I'm incredibly wise, which I guess, you know, over the years, yes, I picked up some wisdom. But just like with any sort of skill to be a teacher, to be a manager, uh, to be a dentist, to be a doctor, um, there is a, there is a specialized training. And I've actually gone through that specialized training. So, uh, what you're tapping into is a very expensive education. Uh, and because of the confines I find myself in as a woman, a black woman, a military wife, a mother, those and the, and the environment that I live in, because that's very important because it depends on where you live as well. The structure normally calls for a white man. He can be young and a prodigy or he can be in his 50s, 40s, perhaps even 30s with small children, um, but he can't look like me. And so I have spent many years trying to break down the barriers to get in a door that I have not been welcomed into. So... I have tried doing it in other ways. I've tried being a teacher and then hoping to be an influence, not just to children, but to the parents of those children. Um, but we know that teachers are not necessarily viewed as a, um, a profession that needs to be valued. So again, another bout of trying to find value within a structure that is not valued. And then being a military wife which sounds wonderful, being married to a man in uniform, but it is rough and it is difficult and you acquiesce to that profession above all else. So here I am now, 51, and I find myself very tired. And what I find myself drawing to more than anything is poetry. Now, you can say from my training as a chaplain, the ultimate poetry, we would say, in my, in my line of work is the Psalms. And yes, the Psalms are beautiful, and we will talk to, about that on another day. And actually, we have been on the past episodes, because I think the Psalms can be um, an invitation into more poetry in your life, and the way in which things can be said very succinctly and get at your heart. 
because of the noise that goes on in social media. The authenticity with which poetry can get through to the heart is so valuable, especially now. Because a word carefully chosen and heard at the right time can change a life. So this episode, even though I've been going through the book um, titled My Creative Peace, Finding and Deepening Your Creative Voice While Communing with God, I thought I'd give you the behind the scenes of why I feel like poetry is another way to get at your heart. If you are finding that you can't seem to connect with God, maybe you are someone who avidly reads the Bible. I encourage you to maybe find some poetry and see if that can be a conduit for which you can reach God again. Because God is always reaching for us. But life can cause us not to hear. Here's a segment from a book called Saved by a Poem, The Transformative Power of Words by Kim Rosen. She begins with a, a poem by Rumi. Sometimes you hear a voice through the door calling you as a fish out of water, hear the waves, or a hunting falcon hears the drums come back. This turning toward what you deeply love saves you. Here's what she says. Poetry is the language of the soul. From below the surface of your life, the truth of who you are calls to you through the poems you love. Even if you've been touched by only one poem or just a single line heard at a crucial moment and remembered, those words are an invitation from within to take them deeply into your life and speak them aloud brings every level of who you are, your thoughts, your words, your feelings, and even your physical energies into alignment with what matters most to you. You are receiving and giving voice not only to the poem, but also to your own soul. Many of us have searched for guides to help unravel the riddles of our existence and point us toward aspects of ourselves we cannot uncover on our own. We have turned to gurus, friends, lovers, and mentors for help. A poem you love can be such a teacher. Imagine a poem that you love can be the teacher you're looking for. I'd like you to take some time today and think about if there ever has been a poem that has really touched you in that kind of way. And maybe take this as the invitation to go back to that poem and reread it. Maybe there's possibly a collection of poems that you've come across that you've been wanting to sit down and and read through. Maybe this is the season to do that. I'm your host, Robin Norgren. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you want to see more of what I'm reading and writing, you can find me over on Instagram under UBU for life, or you can find me under my name, Robin, R-O-B-I-N underscore Norgren, N-O-R-G-R-E-N.